Hey guys, what is going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today we're going to do a little takedown and cleaning of the SKS rifle. And what we have here today is a beautiful 1953 Tula SKS. Uh, this rifle is on loan to us from Stan, the owner of SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. And this comes from Stan's private collection. And uh, guys, check out the information right there for you about SS Pond, and they will take care of your firearm's needs. All right, so what exactly do we need to clean this rifle? They're very basic, they're very simple. Uh, but again, there's a little bit of maintenance we wanna do on this before we take it to the range and shoot it. Just looking at it, it does not look like it's been fired a lot, so it will be interesting to see exactly what we find uh, under the hood, so to speak. So for cleaning, I'm gonna go ahead and use some Rem oil, okay? We're also gonna use some Safari Land CLP. Now you can use either or. There's certain parts I like to use Rem oil on, and there's certain parts I like to stick with for CLP. Uh, we've also got some basic uh, brushes. Now you can use old toothbrushes if you want to. These are just some gun, gun cleaning brushes. You can get these in most of your uh, firearm sections of your sporting goods stores and your mom and pop uh, gun stores, etc. A little single piece cleaning rod that we might use around the area of the gas block, a bore light, uh, some Q-tips, some cotton patches. If you want to save some money, you can always just cut up an old cotton t-shirt like I've said before, and uh, you can just go that route too. Uh, to clean the barrel now, you can use you know a single piece cleaning rod if you want to, or multi-segment cleaning rod. I tend to use boar snakes because they're quick and simple. This is the uh, Real Avid boar snake. They run about 10 bucks. This one's chambered in 762 or 30 caliber slash 308, and uh, it's perfect for this application. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first, we want to ensure that this firearm is in fact unloaded. So all you have to do is grab this little lever right here that you see underneath the uh, rifle. You have an internal box magazine, so we're gonna pull back on that lever and just go ahead and drop the magazine down. Okay, any, any spare rounds that are loaded in the rifle should fall out at this time. And go ahead and pull up on this charging handle right here and check the inside of the receiver to ensure that the firearm is unloaded. It is. All right, let's move on to our next step. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and take off this receiver cover. So just go ahead and flip up this lever approximately 90 degrees and go ahead and pull the lever out off to your right. And that will loosen up the uh, rear receiver cover so it pops right off. There you go. Go ahead and take it off and go ahead and set that off to the side. Go ahead and pull out your recoil spring next and we'll move on to our next step. Okay, after that, we wanna go ahead and get this bolt carrier group out or bolt and carrier. Now your hammer's gonna be right here. That could put a little bit of pressure on the uh, bolt itself. So let's go ahead and pull back. Okay, go ahead and take off your uh, carrier first. And in this situation, the bolt just came out with it. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull out both pieces and uh, set those off to the side. Okay, so the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna remove the upper handguard and the piston. This part's somewhat similar to what you do on an AK-47. Now, this might just be unique to the Russian design, but the little tab is not sticking out, so it's gonna be hard for me to get a hold of this lever. I'm basically gonna to have to use my fingernail and pull up about 45 degrees. And there's a little bar up here, and once this little half moon is flat, you'll be able to easily just pull the handguard straight up. So let me go ahead and do that. It's a little awkward to do this from this angle on camera. So I'm gonna put both fingernails behind it and pull up a little bit. It's not tense at all. It does lock into this first position. Now you don't wanna go up to 90 degrees. If you do, you run the risk of having this piston extension shoot out of this uh, gas block. So we're just gonna go up about 45 degrees until I can see, and it locks in this upper position, that the uh, handguard's gonna come out. So we will go ahead and do that. Normally you'd wanna stand behind the firearm, but again, because I'm filming, this is just the angle you're gonna get. So let's go ahead and take that out. Okay, okay the little uh, upper handguard is out and your piston will slide forward and come out with it. Okay, there's some carbon on there a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and start cleaning that off here in just a little bit. Okay, so you can see how far we've gone with this lever at this point. Uh, what you wanna do is put your uh, finger in front of this area where your rear side is. And uh, this is gonna be under pressure, so be careful and just go ahead and pull up and you're gonna feel it shoot into your finger like that and just go ahead and gently release. Pull out the piston and the extension and the spring and just set that off to the side and we'll move on to our next step. All right, so removal of the cleaning rod is a piece of cake. All you gotta do is just pull on this little uh, mounting loop right here and pull your bayonet up. Obviously you wanna be careful because your bayonet's gonna be in a semi-mounted but dangerous position and that's gonna relieve the tension from the cleaning rod. You can just go ahead and pull the cleaning rod right out. Here we go. And then just go ahead and pull the bayonet into the fixed position and this is what we're gonna have to do in order to get it out of the stock, okay? so. Again, pull forward on the loop, it'll lock back into place over the barrel, and you are all set. Okay, so now the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna remove this entire trigger pack, and to do so, just make sure you have your safety pressed this way down up towards the stock, and you're gonna be using a 1 8 inch punch. I'll mention this uh, earlier in the video, I'll go back and put the text in to remind you to get this out, but I'm just now telling you, you'll need a 1 8 of an inch punch, and you're gonna press on this little release back here, 
and it's got some spring pressure on it, so don't be alerted. Don't be alarmed if it just kind of pops up at you or makes a loud noise. That's basically normal. So you're going to put some pressure on the rear. I'm going to put my hand over the top so it doesn't pop off completely. But you're going to press. There you go, and it will pop right up. Go ahead and remove the trigger group. Okay. <clears throat> okay, magazine removal. It can be a little bit tricky. I honestly don't think this magazine's ever been removed before. Everything on this rifle looks absolutely fabulous. So uh, pulling up on the cover just a little bit. Just go ahead and get your finger in there and just pull back and eventually that magazine is going to pop out. You can see it has kind of a little bit of a claw action on it so you want to be careful that you don't have that cover turned all the way up otherwise you're going to have some trouble pulling it out. Okay, go ahead and set that off to the side. Okay, so at this point we want to remove the stock from the uh, upper receiver so we're going to go ahead and do so. Um, it's real simple. It's basically just going to come apart at this point. Just go ahead and pull the stock off. We're going to set that off to the side. We will get that unhooked from the uh, sling. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off with the uh, receiver cover. Just go ahead and give it a wipe down on the top. We're just gonna use CLP on everything here. Okay, go ahead and get your fingers in there and wipe out the inside. There's a little edge on the inside here. Make sure you get in there too. Now, if you want, for any of these like mounting holes, anytime we have any kind of holes that a bolt's gonna go through or any kind of a pin, uh, Q-tip with a little bit of CLP inside of there. Again, you want to wipe off any excess oil. See a little bit of oxidation comes off on there, but not a whole lot. Again, very little, if any carbon fouling is coming out of there. Also, make sure you get back inside of here deep because there's a little pocket back here that you definitely want to get some oil on. Now, again, if that's too much oil for you, you can wipe it off with a dry patch and just leave a thin coat on there. I'm going to let this kind of soak in a little bit. We'll wipe everything down before reassembly. Okay, moving on to the next part. We'll go ahead and work on this uh, piston extension. Now, if this is really crusty or covered in carbon or spent powder, uh, you can spray it down with some CLP and brush it off if you want to. Um, that's what those brushes are for that we showed you at the beginning. Just go ahead and give it a nice wipe down. Again, this one's in really good shape. I have a, an SKS Sporter that I had traded on a year or two ago, and the it had been fired so much that the extension was basically locked into the gas block with carbon and fouling and, and spent powder. It wouldn't come out, it had to be tapped out. So <laughs> this one, having this one pop right out was definitely a uh, relief. So let's go ahead and put those off to the side. Okay, moving right along. Recoil spring. All right, so next couple steps here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull back the zoom just a little bit. So we've got some CLP, again, on a patch. Go ahead and wipe off the recoil spring. This one is basically spotless, great condition. Okay, we'll go ahead and take that and just put that off to the side. Okay, recoil spring. Uh, moving on, let's go ahead and take your magazine box. And for this, just go ahead and give it a light spray down with some REM oil inside, okay, all the way around. There we go. And then go ahead and take a clean patch and just go ahead and wipe it off completely. And this will leave a nice uh, protective coating on it. It's going to make sure that you have adequate lubrication in all the places necessary. Get in there, though. Get in all those little nooks and crannies and corners. Again, you can take as much time as you want when you do this. But this will help ensure that you don't get any rust on these parts. Again, I'm gonna go over all these and make sure all the excess oil is off of it uh, before reassembly, so it's not gonna just be dripping with oil. You don't need excess of oil on these things, but there are parts that need a decent amount of lubrication to function. There we go. Okay, and it takes care of the magazine box. Again, you can spend a little more time if you want to. If you need to get the brush in there, you can do so. All right, we'll just go ahead and set that off to the side. Uh, moving on to the handguard up on the top. Now I've got a single one piece rod that we're using with the upper handguard here. Little tiny chunk of patch here. This could take several passes to go through. So you wanna go from the, let's see here, yep. From the rear to the front. So go ahead and just push your patch in there. Just go ahead and scrub it a little bit. If you lose the patch, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you're probably gonna take several of these. If you have like little quarter inch patches that maybe you use for small bore rifles, uh, you can do that too. The idea behind this is we wanna leave it clean, but you obviously don't wanna leave any lubrication inside that handguard because that's going to attract dust and grime and that could cause some fouling issues, okay? So I'm gonna keep working on that for a little while until it comes out clean and then we will come right back. Okay, so it took about a dozen of those patches to really get this gas uh, tube cleaned out. If, if I look through it, I can see it's nice and clean. It's shiny, but it's not oily inside. We're going to go ahead and wipe off the outside with our CLP. Also underneath. Okay. All right. 
Let's go ahead and set that off to the side. We will go ahead and move on to our piston. Now this is this is a little dirty, so I'm gonna give it a, a generous coating of CLP here. See how some of that carbon's coming off? Yeah, she's pretty dirty. Okay, we're gonna let that sit for just a minute here. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, grab our cleaning brush. Okay, you can use your toothbrush if you want to, like I said before. Just go ahead and start scrubbing if you want to. Now this does have some sort of a coating on it, so don't worry about that. Uh, this is not gonna be completely shiny and silver all the way through, not an issue. Okay, go ahead and wipe it off. Okay, we're gonna go over that a couple times until this piston comes out as clean as possible. Keep going over it, and the more times you do this, the easier it's gonna get, because you're always gonna have that little protective layer of oil on there that your crud and debris are going to attach to, okay, instead of the uh, bare metal itself. Okay, I'm gonna work on this one for just a few minutes and we'll come back and show you how to clean up the bolt and the bolt carrier. Okay, for the uh, bolt carrier itself, there's two different things we're gonna use. Short cleaning rod with a full size patch on it with some CLP and then a regular patch with just CLP on it. We're gonna go over every single edge. Okay, just continue wiping it down. Make sure it's nice and clean. There we go. Go ahead and wipe it off. Now at this point, if you want, you can get some, uh, some Q-tips out. We'll use those here in just a minute. There's a couple portions here that we want to leave a decent amount of lubrication on, okay? So go ahead and get in there and really give it a good scrub. All right, now go ahead and take the cleaning rod and put it into the rear of the carrier and go ahead and scrub that out too. Now you can go through this with a, uh, a dry patch if you want to. It's going to leave a thin protective coat like I've said before. Okay, you can see there's a little bit of, a little bit of uh, carbon in there, a little bit of grease, okay? So, let's go ahead and put the dry patch in there. There we go. Okay, pull that out, done. All right, now let's go ahead and take a Q-tip and uh, put some oil on that Q-tip and just go ahead and run it down these tracks right here. There you go, down the sides, okay. And then also just a little bit underneath here. Now the entire bolt itself has got a coating of, of, of oil on it, of thin oil, okay? There you go, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and set that off to the side and we will move on to the bolt itself. First thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and uh, wipe off the bolt itself with some, again, CLP on a patch. Just gonna wipe it off. Get that initial carbon off there and also keep your hands cleaner as you're getting into the internals of the bolt. It's not that hard to disassemble though. And your firing pin and so on. Okay. Scrub on the sides there. Again, the idea, leave a thin coat of oil and that's it. You're going to get a Q-tip with some oil on it. Scrub down the sides here. Really get in there. Get in those channels good. Oops. There we go. It's important to make sure that the uh, bolt face itself is nice and clean. Really get in there and give that a good scrub. Get your uh, fingernail in there where your extractor is. You can see how much powder is already coming off of that. Go ahead and just give it a little scrub. Free up some of that dirt. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Oh, it's nice and clean, looks good. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and give this just a general wipe down with a coat of oil. Um, something that I want to apologize for is I don't have a vise and I don't want to start hammering away on this bolt because this is not my rifle. So I'm just going to explain to you uh, simply what you would do if you want to assemble this bolt, disassemble this bolt, okay? So you have a retaining pin, you're going to tap right here with a 516 size punch. Retaining pin is going to come out, okay? Your firing pin is going to come out and also your extractor is going to just pop off, okay? Now reassembly is very simple. You're just going to push that extractor back on, okay? You're going to put your firing pin back in. You're gonna push your retaining pin back in and your bolt's gonna be reassembled. So I apologize for the uh, disappointment if I don't show you the bolt disassembly. You don't have to do that every single time, but it's always a good idea to do so. This bolt is very, very clean, so we're not gonna worry about it, but that would be the process that you would go through. And let's go ahead and set that off to the side. Okay, so the uh, amount of lubrication that you wanna use in this trigger group, it depends on how dirty it is, it depends on how much crud is on it. Um, make sure you don't pull the trigger so you don't release the hammer, okay? So what I'm gonna do is take REM oil at this point, not CLP. Any place where there's a little pin, I'm just going to squirt just a little bit of oil in there. And obviously, as you know, we're going to 
wipe off any of the excess. Okay, and we'll go to the other side. And just this little dab is going to basically put exactly what you need in just the right spots. And then you can just go ahead and wipe off with a uh, dry patch. If it's excessively dirty, you can take a brush to this if you want to. Okay, make sure you get that hammer cleaned off. Basically, you want everything to have a light coat of oil on it, but nothing too excessive, okay? Just a protective coat, that's all you need. Make sure you get around the trigger area, get around the trigger guard, just go ahead and wipe it all off. Everything should be just lightly covered. Okay, I can't emphasize that enough. There we go. Okay, inside the receiver, uh, we do have the uh, firearm just upright right now. Go ahead and wipe out the inside. Go through it, take your time. Make sure you get everything wiped off good. Now you can also flip the receiver over if you want to, but we're going to get ready to clean the barrel here, clean out the barrel, I should say. Now again, this uh, rifle has not had any kind of corrosive ammunition fired through it, and the cleaning process for that is kind of an animal upon itself. So you're going to want to look up some specialty videos so you find out what kind of chemicals you need to do so. Again, we're just wiping out the general area around here. Really get towards the front where you tend to get a lot of carbon buildup also. Okay, there we go. Now, I guess we will go ahead and flip it over. That way we can get to the underside magazine feed. Again, get everything wiped off nice and clean. Okay, now at this point, we're also gonna just wipe off the entire underside of the rifle, of the barrel, receiver, and so on. If you want, you can go ahead and wipe off that bayonet, CLP, or some rim oil is gonna be fine. Okay, now this portion where we have this gas piston extension, take your cleaning rod and go ahead and press through with a small patch. You can run this through several times if you need to, okay? And that's going to get that uh, area cleaned out. You could start to get a little bit of a carbon buildup in there. Okay. okay, so at this point, cleaning the barrel is pretty simple. I'll be using my bore snake. If you want to use a, a cleaning rod, you can go from the rear to the front with a patch with some oil on it. Take the patch off. Keep running clean patches down the barrel until it comes clean. Uh, for me, I'm just going to put a little shot of CLP on the rear portion here. You can put a little bit of oil down the barrel if you want to. That's all up to you. This barrel is very clean, so I don't think we have to worry about that. We're going to go ahead and push this through the rear. Now I'm going to do this probably three or four times. These boar snakes are pretty efficient. You know, some people just don't like them. Um, I've been a big fan of them. Never had a problem with them before. Use these in a lot of rifles. And the, uh, the real avid uh, boar snake, you can attach the wire to the front of this if you want. Use this as a handle to, pour, to pull through. Right here. Okay, go ahead and hold on to the firearm and pull. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do that probably three times. I'm just going to pull it through, and we'll see how the board looks after that. Okay, uh, reassembly time. It's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and grab the receiver and barrel. Okay, and go ahead and drop it in. Let's see. Gonna have to lock it in the front portion here of the stock and then just go ahead and press in and down. Okay, now at that point, you've got a couple options. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and that's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to get the uh, magazine back in and also that trigger group. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get the uh, magazine back in. It's just simply going to lock back into the front as you took it out. There we go. Okay. All right, now go ahead and grab your trigger group. Now this part's gonna be a little bit tricky. It's gonna take a little bit of uh, pressure to get it to work. Okay, so go ahead and put your trigger group back in. It's gonna drop right in. Now all you really have to do is just press really hard on the top of the trigger guard. This little pin is going to lock the trigger and your receiver back together. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. There we go. That's back together. Go ahead and push your magazine in. Make sure it locks back up. Okay, so for the uh, next step in the reassembly, make sure you've got this extension and the spring like we had mentioned before. Uh, what you want to do, this is going to be maybe a little bit difficult for you. You have to push it in far, far enough into the side block that you can pull down on it, which is going to cause it to lock into place, this little latch right here. And when you let off and don't feel any pressure on your finger, you know that it's in far enough. Okay, so I'm just going to use one finger. I'm going to press back on it. Okay. And I'm going to pull back on this latch just enough to get it to hold into place, which it could be a little bit different on all of your SKSs. On this situation, it's just the first notch. All right, now we'll go ahead and uh, move on to the handguard and piston. Okay, let's go ahead and take your piston and your upper handguard and push your piston back into place, like such, okay? 
and then go ahead and attach it to the front of, I guess you could say your gas block and go ahead and just pull down, snap into place, pull the lever back down until it locks. Okay, let go. Okay, moving on to the next step. Okay, so for this next step, I'm just gonna show you some of the fine details here. We're gonna put our bolt in, okay, and then our bolt carrier on top. And then as you slide it forward, you might encounter the rear of the uh, magazine box right here. Uh, you can see it right there. You might have to push that down in order for you to slide the entire bolt and bolt carrier forward, just to let you know. You also are gonna have to press down a little bit from the top because you've got that hammer uh, that's in the cock position, but it's also going to be putting pressure on the bottom of your uh, bolt. So easiest way to do this is to put your bolt and your bolt carrier together into one piece, kind of put some pressure on them, and then just drop them in. If they come apart, it's, it's not the end of the world, okay? And then just go ahead and slide forward. You can use my index finger to push down on that wall of that magazine right there. Okay, slide it forward. Okay, now we'll move on to the recoil spring. All right, so for the uh, recoil spring and the receiver cover, you've got this little smaller end and you've got a more open end. Make sure that the smaller end goes in the bolt itself, the bolt carrier. Okay, and now we're gonna do is go ahead and take the receiver cover and we're going to slide that in and you're gonna be pushing forward, okay? Okay, pull back on your handle, make sure that it's up 90 degrees. Go ahead and push forward on that receiver cover. There you go. Okay, push that lever in and go ahead and bend it forward another 90 degrees. There you go. Okay, so to get your cleaning rod back in, go ahead and drop your bayonet back down. I had it folded up, obviously, to be careful. Uh, go ahead and take your cleaning rod and press it back in. By again, taking off that bayonet, it's gonna take the tension off the cleaning rod so it doesn't fall out. Go ahead and snap it back into place. You push your bayonet back up, it's gonna lock back up. And that basically is it. So again, the 1953 Tula Russian SKS, we cannot wait to get this out. It's gonna be awesome. And uh, we're going to be doing a kind of a series of tests on it. We're going to compare it to a Sporterized SKS to try to figure out if this is the route that you want to go or maybe if you want to Sporterize or not. I would never Sporterize this SKS and I don't think that's ever going to happen. But uh, thanks for joining us on the cleaning of this uh, SKS rifle. Guys, if you have any other tips or tricks or anything like that that you like to use when you clean your SKS rifle, make sure you let us know. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Okay, we're also over there on uh, GunTube.org and GunStreamer and YouTube. But in the meantime, I want you all to have fun. I want you to be safe. Please like and subscribe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care and have a great week. Bye-bye.